now this will be well done and shredded by the time we ever by the time it cooks so I'm taking that off too so you can see I have some really nice pieces of what can be a byproduct of tenderloin tips but this is the finished product now I've got some butcher twine and um, I like tying this shut because you can see it's going to flop open and cook very unevenly but if we tie it tightly it will almost be in the same cylindrical shape as the rest of it um, we could do the classic butcher knot from end to end, but really all we're trying to do is tie up this butt end, which would be the closest to the uh, uh, sirloin end or the hip area, uh, and then the tenderloin travels forward toward the shoulder this way and tapers all on up. So this is always called the butt end. And what we do is a simple slip knot to start with, and that's just this guy, parallel, turn it once, and then you reach in and pull the loop through. Always leave a little tail end here. Again, that's that disappearing knot trick. The loop and the pull. But we need string on this end, so you always have a nice amount of tail there. And here we go. Now, there's an old butcher trick of finding something on the ceiling because the way it comes off the spool is much more effective uh, from that direction, and uh, but you don't have to do that. You don't have to do that. Um, but if you're tying up a large roast, it's kind of nice to have that string is always falling over. But if you pull it this way, it works great. So I'm going to start down here with our slip knot, our loop, and tighten it up. It self tightens with this type of knot. There's that end we need. And now I'm just going to loop it. I'm not going to do the classic butcher knot. Uh, because the, the, the idea is to keep it simple and tight. And it's a lot easier to untie when you get there. Now, this other end, let's bring this back, cut it off, and bring it back to the original site of the knot. So that when it's time to unknot this, we only have to cut it in one place. You're not searching for the other knot. Notice the square knot there. So these two knots are right next to each other so we have a good start point. And you can see how cylindrical that is. Now over here where it tapers down flat, this will be well done by the time this is medium rare. Here's a nice little trick uh, to help that and it certainly looks better and uh, provides you with a more professional and boxier cut. This is kind of a, a butterfly technique of going through the, something three-fourths of the way. And I'm going to fold it under, but it's really stiff. So what I do is, obviously, I've lined this countertop with plastic wrap so I can do it on the countertop. I want to tenderize this a little bit, convincing it and flattening it down so when it folds under, it's more flexible as a flap. And now you can see we've got almost this perfect cylinder here for even cooking. And this will... Uh, be a good end cut for someone who wants an end cut. It will be a little more cooked, but uh, it'll cook a lot more evenly like this, although it will be in almost two pieces. And again, the slip knot. Tie this in place. I just come around one time and then join these two. You can do it any way you like. You can do individual pieces of string and tie it. And the square knot. And without tying up the whole tenderloin, we've just done the, the crucial uh, ends. So there you have it, a really nice clean tenderloin, a little bit of fat on it, not too much. The little box cut on the end here, tied up for even cooking. Again, we season this uh, pretty generously with kosher salt, black peppercorns freshly ground, sear it on the grill. We finish these in the oven on a rack uh, at about 325 degrees, maybe 30 minutes for an internal temperature of 130 to 135. Um, there you have it, folks. Thank you very much for visiting us um, at a chef's kitchen, Williamsburg, Virginia.